Hello everyone, Echoak here. We have a really great build for you. This is a follow-up to the Infinimus build. Myself and Macrobioboy have really been theorycrafting this build for a very, very long time, even since the beta stages of the game, where we have sort of Infinimus and Bone Spirit together. Bone Spirit is super attractive as a damage skill because it has the highest damage multiplier in the game. In fact, if you do the math, if you have five out of five Bone Spirit, you have 200 Essence, which 200 Essence is very achievable for an end game character. That's a 712% damage multiplier. So Bone Spirit, of course, can do crazy damage. It can do crazy crits. It has all of the power of Bone Spear and more. But this skill has, it has a promise and it has a problem to solve. So the promise is, I will give you the best damage multiplier in the game, but I'm gonna take all of your essence to do it. And that is a very big but. So making sure that you fill up your essence uh, constantly is very difficult to do. But of course, we have Infinimist, and Infinimist allows us to do some pretty nuts things. Some of those things is having uh, Blood Mist off of cooldown constantly. It's having Aberrant Decrepify reduce all of our cooldowns. It's able to have Bone Storm off of cooldown almost with 100% uptime. And this build lets us get to 100% uptime. Let me explain how this all works. So the first important thing uh, on the gear is Umbral. This is a really super important piece of this. And the way Umbral works and understanding how Umbral works is really super important. So this reads, restore four of your primary resource when you crowd control an enemy. But it's not about it's not about just crowd controlling one enemy and then you get four. It's actually about stacking as many different crowd control effects on one enemy constantly to get four over and over and over again. So for example, I'm running Penitent Greaves, which means even as I'm running away from enemies, I'm getting four essence every time an enemy gets chilled by Penitent Greaves. I'm running Corpse Tendrils, which slows enemies and then stuns them in sort of two phases. So all if I have a big pack, I get two sort of waves of essence that enter my, uh, enter my character as this gets cast, which is really cool because it allows me to fill up on essence, very quickly cast a Bone Spirit, and then fill up on essence again and cast another one. I have all of my lucky hit effects. I have Howl from Below, which is giving me a stun chance. It's giving me a fear chance. These gloves give you fear. It's one of the only places in the entire game where any player character can actually have fear. We're getting just constant procs on Umbral, which the most important part of Umbral is that you have to have an enemy, right? And so because you have to have an enemy, it scales with density. And so higher density performs better with Umbral. What if we don't have high density? What if we don't have any enemies on the screen at all and we actually want to still refill our essence? Well, we have a solution for that as well. So we have Grim Harvest with Corpse Explosion. So Grim Harvest gives us six essence every time we explode a corpse and there don't have to be any enemies on the screen in order to do that. And six essence actually isn't a ton. So what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna sit down and just explode a billion corpses uh, before the next pull. One thing that we can do is that we can equip Embalmer. And what Embalmer does is every time we consume a corpse, we have a 30% chance to get a blood orb. We can also equip Potent Blood, which gives us 20 essence. Right now I just have the Codex of Power one. If you do the math per corpse, with the you know percent chance that I'm getting maybe you know one blood orb per three, uh, which is 20 essence, which divided by three is uh, somewhere north of six essence per corpse. If you do the math, that's actually basically just doubling the effectiveness of Grim Harvest sort of differently, right? So one other aspect of this that's really cool is like if I'm in a fight, right? I'm in a big fight and I'm constantly refilling my essence, then I'll refill my essence, I'll refill my essence, I'll be popping corpses all over the place, and then I'll get a pl I'll get into a weird spot in the fight, let's say. Let's say the fate doesn't go my way, I get frozen, I get chilled, like whatever, and I get in a weird spot with my essence and, I, and I'm just empty. Well, now I have all these blood orbs everywhere and I've basically kept my mana battery on the ground, so to speak. So now I can just like run over all of the blood orbs and I'm, boom, full again and now I finished the fight, right? So now I have like 
all of these different sort of like, I've diversified my investments, so to speak, right? I have essence when I have density. I have essence on the ground. I have essence when I don't have density. I have essence when I have corpses. I have essence in single target. I have uh, essence in order to power this massive damage skill always. And so in practice, how this works out is I enter an engagement. I might have zero essence, but I actually don't care because I know I'll have full essence over and over and over and over again. And so every engagement I enter, I cast a full 200 essence bone spirit four or five times every single engagement, like especially the big engagements. Uh, and it is a little bit slower uh, on bosses and that sort of thing. But right now I am one, maybe two shotting, sometimes three shotting bosses. And eventually I think as I add more and more damage, uh, because my damage multipliers haven't all come online, I will definitely be one shotting pretty much every boss in the game. But what's really cool about this for hardcore is that not only am I able to stack this really crazy amount of damage, I'm also able to stack survivability. And this is where we need to talk about Bone Storm. Bone Storm has this right here, Shielding Storm. This is probably Necromancer's best aspect of survivability in the entire game. So the problem with this is of course that Bone Storm is just not up that often. It's a 60 second cooldown. Even if you have cooldown reduction, you can get it down to maybe like 46 seconds. Even if you have Decrepify, you can get it down to 30, 20 seconds with, you know, a pack and some density. So it's just really hard to have 100% uptime because it, it only lasts 10 seconds and it has a, a, a pretty giant cooldown. And what Bone Spirit lets us do is it lets us burn through our essence. And in this case, in this case, that's actually super valuable because we have rapid ossification, which reads every 100 essence that you spend reduces the cooldowns of your bone skills by 1.5 seconds. So essentially how this is working out for me right now is I have about 200 essence. I burn through all 200 essence every time I cast Bone Spirit. Every pack, I'm casting Bone Spirit somewhere between three and five times. So let's say I burn through 600 essence. Every 200 essence, that's three seconds. So that's sec six seconds uh, off of that cooldown uh, for uh, you know two casts, three casts, that's nine seconds, 12 seconds, and so on. This scales as you add more max essence and as you add more generation. Right, so the more and better your generation, like for example, as soon as my potent blood uh, ring is at 20 and my uh, generation from sort of that side of the equation goes up, then I'm actually, by generating more essence, I am in effect doing more damage and making the cooldown on Bone Storm go down because of rapid ossification, which is also making sure that I have more survivability. It's actually really crazy how this goes to this, goes to this, goes to this, right? All of those things sort of are like feeding each other uh, in a constant cycle. And so not only do I have the highest damage multiplier in the game, I have really ridiculous amounts of survivability. And in fact, I have so much survivability that last night, we were testing out and theory crafting things about this build. I accidentally did a Nightmare Dungeon 30. Now, Nightmare Dungeon 30 might not sound impressive to you because you're level 100 and you have a fully min max character. I'm level 78 in hardcore. I was deleting the mobs so fast, I was taking so little damage that I did not even notice their damage. Let's go over the gear and the particular setup that I'm running because I do think there's a couple setups that you can run with this. And there's a couple of different theory crafts that uh, you could do. We have Blood Mist Corpse Explosion. You cannot get rid of this. This is, this is doing two things for you. One, this lets you engage on anything. So the fact that Blood Mist is exploding corpses and giving you Miasma allows you to just go ahead and get that damage over time over the whole pull. And getting that damage over time over the whole pull is giving you all of your survivability, and it's also going ahead and proccing Umbral a whole bunch. I basically, almost every time I do a pack pull, I will Blood Mist into it, and then drop all of my other stuff on top of it afterwards. The other thing this is doing is this is bringing your Blood Mist cooldown down by 2.5 seconds. 
pretty much every time you cast it. So then you have Disobedience. This is, of course, just the best uh, damage reduction you can get in the game. We're running Howl from below, but Howl's value here is kind of three things. One, it's the automatic lucky hit chance. It's a corpse explosion attack, attack speed. Uh, it's, well, I guess four things. It's the stun and the fear lucky hits, which are proccing Umbral, right? So how Hal's value here is like maybe not the corpse explosion uh, homing volatile skeleton that you get so, so much, even though that is actually still valuable. Uh, it's just, uh, just such a good item when most uniques in the game are kind of mid. We have uh, Bonestorm Barrier, which is uh, very, very good on legs. And then this is a swap that you can actually make. So I choose Penitent Greaves over Ghost Walker. You can actually put Ghost Walker in here for more movement speed, but I really, really like Penitent Greaves because A, it's giving us an extra little damage multiplier, which is really nice. But B, it's giving, my, it's giving me this uh, Trail of Frost for chill. That's doing two things for me. One, when I need to run away from enemies just for safety, I'm just automatically regening my essence with Umbral. And two, when I open up on a pack, I'm actually going ahead and chilling everything on the pack because I'm just grouping all the mobs together. So they're all just sitting on this one spot, this one pixel, where they all have uh, chill and therefore I'm chilling them and they're slow and I also get uh, umbral procs from all of that. For the neck, I'm running Serration. Uh, this is one of the biggest damage multipliers you have. I still have Fueled for Death on here, which uh, I think I'd rather have uh, Macabre ranks here instead, but uh, Fueled by Death is still very, very, very good. Uh, I have Umbral, of course, and uh, I have Potent Blood. Uh, there's that. Let's go to the weapon. The weapon gives you crit strike chance with Corpse Tendrils. This, of course, everybody knows how valuable this is on pretty much every build that is Necromancer right now. Super, super, super valuable. And then, of course, we have an offhand, which has Embalmer. Now, Embalmer here is doing something really, really cool. Um, and this, by the way, this loadout requires Embalmer, which you'll uh, you'll see here very shortly. Of course, we're, we're getting uh, Blood Orbs, which is giving us Essence, but it's also doing Blood Drinker, which I'll go over here in a second. Uh, and this is really cool. For the very first time in an S-tier uh, Necromancer loadout, a shield is pretty much a hard requirement, especially for hardcore here. You don't really have to run a shield in softcore. Um, one of the reasons I'm running a shield here is I have a max crit chance roll on this shield. I have damage reduction over time. I have cooldown reduction. So this shield is just, it's a god tier shield. Um, it's just so, 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 so good, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm running it. Now, of course, uh, for Book of the Dead, I'm getting crits. I'm grabbing uh, extra essence. I'm grabbing uh, uh, golem crit strike damage. Now, on the Paragon board, we are running Blood Drinker. So Blood Drinker, this is where we're basically getting all of our Fortify from. And so we're getting all of the Fortify and we're getting that extra 10% damage reduction basically all the time. Even with the fact that there's a bug right now where Blood Mist, uh, when you pick up Blood Orbs while in Blood Mist, you don't uh, actually it doesn't actually trigger Blood Drinker. We still have enough Blood Orbs where we're still uh, fortified. Of course, if we didn't have this bug, it would be even better. Anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. I could keep talking about this build for ages. We've been doing so much theory crafting of this on my stream. So if you're not following my stream over at Twitch, then go to twitch.tv slash echohack and check that out. And of course, if you made it this far in this video, please consider throwing a like and a subscribe down below. Have a great day and peace.